So, are you excited to get all the details on some awesome second grade math curriculums? Well, I am. Hey, it's Rachel from 7 and All, and today I am going to be contrasting and comparing Math with Confidence second grade with Math UC Beta to help you decide if either of these or both might be a good fit for you. All right, we're gonna get started by looking at Math UC Beta. Math UC does not level their curriculum with grade levels, uh, but Beta would typically be considered the second grade level when it comes to Math UC. Now, if you know anything about Math UC, you have probably seen these blocks before. This is what they're really famous for, the hundreds, the tens, the units, as well as all of these fun, colorful guys. They are the signature of Math UC and they are still used in the Beta level. I would say they're not maybe used quite as much as they are used in primer or in alpha, um, but you'll still want to have these on hand, get them out. How much you use them on a day-to-day -day basis will probably depend on your child and how much they benefit from really seeing and using these or how much they enjoy it. But you do still use them in beta, not as much as in the very beginning of math. Then these are the other pieces of the program. You can get the teaching videos on a DVD or because of the time in which we live, you can also just get them through online streaming. So these are the teaching videos. Many, many families hugely benefit from having the teaching videos that come with Math UC. I will say our family doesn't actually use these on any regular basis, but that is because we've been using Math UC for over 20 years and are very, very familiar with the Math UC approach. If you are less familiar with the teaching approach, you will probably want to be using the videos on a more regular basis. But it is not a watch a video every single day. And I'll show you a little bit how Matthew C is set up. One thing I should mention is that Matthew C is known for focusing on one big topic throughout um, one year of the curriculum. So with beta, we are focusing on multiple digit addition and subtraction. We're getting really, really good at adding and subtracting even with large numbers. However, and this can kind of turn off some people from Matthew C because they see it as what? How could we focus on adding and subtracting for an entire year? I, I feel like that's a little bit of a misconception as to what it is like in the day-to-day -day basis. There are other math concepts integrated. You are looking at time, you are looking at measurements, you're doing a little bit of work with you know shapes, measuring shapes, adding together sides uh, of those shapes to figure out the distance around. Um, so don't be too worried about that. You know, Addition and subtraction sounds maybe simple at first, but there are many different elements incorporated. So yeah, here we have perimeter, we've got measurement, um, we've got money in here, we've got some skip counting, which is a great foundation for adding, but also for multiplication later on. We've got telling time, so bar graphs as well. So there is other, there are other elements included. Um, the way that Matthew C is set up is that it is 30 lessons and there is teaching for each lesson, but a lesson is not meant to last a day. You might spend roughly a week on a lesson. You might spend a little bit more than a week on a lesson. If you're doing a 36 week school year, you might spend a little longer than one week. Um, you can kind of vary it or make it fit your family, but you have, this is the teacher's guide. So for one lesson, they'll have a couple pages of instruction. And if you are not familiar with the Math UC approach, this is when it's going to be really helpful to read this. There are some game ideas when you want some games for introducing a topic to your children. There aren't games in every lesson, I don't think so. Um, but there are some games, there's some diagrams, some instruction in how to teach this, some tips and some strategies for you as a teacher. So if you are fairly new coming into teaching this, first time using this, you will be pulling out the teacher guide, but you won't probably be pulling it out every day because lesson three, your child will probably work, be working on for a week or a little more than a week. And so you have this instruction, hey, basically we're introducing inequalities to your child. Teach them about this. It's a pretty, that's a pretty straightforward topic. There's an idea for a game that you can play if you want to, um, but then your child is just spending a week going through the workbook pages on inequalities for that week. 
So it's not a super hefty teacher's guide. You can see the thickness here. The student book is much thicker in this case, uh, but it does also include the answer key in the back for you. So that's a lot of people's question it, with second grade type math curriculum. Do I need the teacher's key? Is it just an answer key? It's definitely more than an answer key, but it's also not something you necessarily need to get out every day. If you're feeling uncomfortable with how to teach some of these concepts, how you know regrouping is being taught, um, then you definitely might probably want to get this. It's valuable, there's a lot of useful information, but it's also not something that you will need to be pulling out every single day for math, if that makes sense. Then for the student, these are two pieces of the curriculum that the student will be mainly using is the student workbook, as well as tests. There is a test book. So in the student workbook, we have our 30 lessons and within each lesson, so we'll start with number one. You know, the first week is always very easy. Um, for each lesson, you have A, B, C, D, E, F, and then G. And G is always my favorite page because it's the application and enrichment page of the lesson. I have a special fondness for G. Uh, so you can kind of see how it goes. The first um, lessons in each week are roughly the same. We're doing the same type of exercise but with different numbers. I'll show you a lesson further in to the curriculum. Got some money now, so we've got decimal places that kids have to pay attention. They do integrate reviews into their lessons on previous topics integrated. I would hope that with second grade, a child should hopefully be able to read these for themselves and be pretty independent with this workbook. So Matthew C can be a very independent um, program in many ways and with many kids um, because this is not an overwhelming amount of words on the page. A second grader should be able to handle this and do this fairly well under typical circumstances, um, at, especially after you've introduced the topic for the week, introduced the topic for lesson 14, covered it with them, made sure they understand it or use the teaching video to do so, then they can pretty much be free to go through these throughout the rest of the week and just complete their assignments. So then you have the tests. And at the end of each lesson, you can have your child take a test. So there's one for each of the 30 lessons. Uh, and they look, as you can see, pretty much just like the workbook pages. So it's just like a workbook page. And it's an opportunity for both you and your child to assess, hey, did I really understand um, what was going on there? Did I really understand it? Do I have a high level of accuracy in being able to complete these questions? So uh, different people use Matthew C in different ways. You can opt to not to do all of the pages, A through G. You might opt to skip some of them if it feels like your child is really latching onto a topic very well. I do recommend doing G because that's the one that's always a little different or has an application of what you've been learning. So you can feel safe within the A through G pages of skipping a page or two if you have a child who's moving fast because you know that each lesson is just teaching one incremental skill that's moving up very systematically through what your child can do as far as this year of learning to add and subtract with big numbers really, really well. All right, now for second grade math with confidence. You're gonna notice some differences right off the bat. We do have more of a variety in manipulatives that are suggested and required, but you'll also see some similarities. You are instructed to have some base 10 blocks for hundreds, tens, and ones. So if you already have the Matthew C blocks, those will work perfectly. You use playing cards for a lot of the games. So you'll need, I think, at least two decks of cards. You're instructed to have some different counters. So you can use little bingo tiles like I do. These clear bingo markers are great for games. And then we also have play money and I use play American money. My family does not live in America. So the money my kids use in real life looks a little bit different, but I like the opportunity for them to use US money in schoolwork and also some dice for the regular games that come up. So it really helps to keep all of your math manipulatives just organized and easily accessible because you know you're going to be using them as a part of many, many math lessons. This level also recommends that you have a binder with a few page protectors. 
that you can put some of their black line masters from the back of the book in or some of their game boards uh, that you're going to be using and reusing. It can help to copy these, put them in a binder and use them and reuse them so that they can lay flat. So you'll also probably want to set that up as you're getting started. Now let's dive in. You'll notice something a little bit opposite. Here's the instructor's guide. It is very, very thick. And then here is the student book, which is not nearly as thick. What you probably can infer from this is that the instructor's guide is definitely something you are going to need every single day, every single lesson with second grade math with confidence. It is a huge part of the program. It plays a much bigger daily role than the instructor's guide for math, um, Matthew C. And this is a more teacher intensive program. It's not as well set up for a more independent approach to math, which in the early years, there can be a lot of benefit in having a more teacher intensive approach. You can put in your time as a teacher during these early years and really reap benefits later on. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It could be a good thing depending on your situation, or it could be something that doesn't work as well for you depending on your specific situation. But let's dive in. I wanna give you a glance at the table of contents so you can see the types of skills being worked on. We have addition facts and word problems, numbers up to 200, subtraction facts, graphs, mental addition, telling time. Does any of this sound familiar? This is all very <laughs> similar to what's being worked on. We have mental subtraction, length, written addition, geometry and fractions, um, written subtraction to 200, numbers to 1,000, addition and subtraction to 1,000. So it's not exactly the same, but it, it's gonna sound very familiar to Matthew C. Scope and Sequence and also very similar to the a pretty typical second grade math curriculum. But now I wanna show you what to expect from the teacher's guide, a glimpse at kind of how this all comes together. Each unit will begin with kind of a unit overview page so that you know exactly um, what to expect from the unit, what you're gonna be teaching and what the goals are. They also tell you ahead of time so you can start making some requests from the library what math picture books are going to be scheduled into the enrichment lessons, and I'll talk about those more in a second. Then you have your each week also begins with a little overview of the week in particular. And then you have your lessons. So you're gonna see, and this is one day's worth of the teacher's guide. So it can really look like a lot. However, I do feel like once you get in the hang of using this curriculum, um, it becomes a little more understandable. You know, you're able to kind of quickly work through this. It's not as overwhelming as it might look at first. But each lesson begins with a warm up. This is doing some memory work or doing some review of previously learned material. That's probably gonna look a little bit different in lesson one versus, you know, 10 weeks down the road. But it's a really quick review, five minutes. Maybe it's a verbal review. Maybe it's you show your child some money and have them tell you how much money is that. Um, then you have a teaching activity. And then you usually have a second teaching activity, which is not always, but often a game. They do do quite a few interactive games that involve the teacher and the student playing a game together. Or if you have two students, you can let two of your kids play the game. Even if you have one child in a different level, if they just love games, <laughs> they can play it with your student who's doing this level. So, but there often are very simple games and then you have your workbook pages. So each week has five lessons scheduled. The first four are the normal lessons, and then the fifth lesson is called optional. It's an enrichment lesson where you are reviewing concepts, but then you also have a picture book to read, and then you have an enrichment activity, and this is an activity that usually is a little bit extra a little bit beyond just your normal math game, a little bit more fun. Sometimes it's an application to real life. Some, sometimes it's even something that suggests going outside, getting out chalk and drawing stuff on the driveway. They've got some variety in those lessons, but those are listed as optional. Let's go a little bit further in so we can see once we're beyond just the reviewing. I wanna give you a glimpse at this from further into the curriculum. So lesson 11, we're practicing some subtraction facts, trying to build speed here. We have our warm up review. So just a really quick oral review right here. Then we have a teaching activity using 10 frames. 
then you have a little game. As I said, they've got quite a few games, um, but they're not always doing a different game. It's often telling you, hey, play this game again. So don't feel like every lesson or every week you're learning a whole new game. It's often playing the same game, but maybe now we're using a different set of numbers. So I really appreciate that because I don't wanna be always learning a whole new game. Um, but using the same game and now we're just using a different set of numbers so we're practicing a different set of facts or something like that or we were doing it with addition and now we're doing it with subtraction so i appreciate that <laughs> um, not constantly learning new math games but being able to use the same ones in slightly different ways so third lesson of the week oh my kids always love it when we get to play store and then we have our enrichment and review lesson. Again, warm up picture book and then an enrichment activity. Now I'll give you a glimpse at the student workbook. Now they have a different approach, which is a very colorful student workbook. And you are doing two sides of a work page at this second grade level. You, the first page is typically more on new, newly taught information while the second back side of the page is where you're, you'll see your review material. So they have, often have game boards right in the book as part of the workbook page, which is really nice. My son loves to like peek through his school book and look for when the next game is coming up. I'll give you a glimpse inside here because it kind of shows you what they're expecting or some of the activities that you can do, you'll be doing uh, with the materials. So we have another game board there. We've got word problems. 10 frames, let's scooch further in. Ooh, a race, oh, I'm sure he's gonna love that one. <laughs> Racing, there's often a slight element of competition in the games and uh, he appreciates that. Treasure hunt, oh wow, uh, yeah. See, this is kind of my first time going through this book very closely for the student book and I'm already noticing he's gonna have a lot of fun with many of these. So. It's a little bit more variety, although you are still typically working on one major skill for each week. So we're working with graphs, but we have a couple pages of working with graphs in different ways. There's a little more variety from day to day. Just trying to give you a nice glimpse through here. And then I wanna show you one more element of the program. As I mentioned, there are weekly picture book recommendations as part of the enrichment lessons. You do not have to go out and buy all of those picture books. You could skip those lessons altogether. However, I think that the picture books are a really, really valuable part of the program and I wouldn't recommend totally skipping them. You might be able to find some YouTube read alouds, but also I have found that with math picture books, it can be hard to really see all the details in the illustrations from a YouTube read aloud. Often you kind of need to get up close to figure out what's going on since there are math concepts being taught. Um, so I do recommend, you know, try to find some of them or try to find some at your local library if you can. Uh, and I'll just show you a few that I've gotten. I've gotten most of them off thrift books, used books, you know, they're great. Just a couple dollars each and I feel like we really do get a good value for them. So here are a few that are specifically scheduled in second grade. There are a bunch more that I don't have, but these are what I have. The Great Graph Contest, Fair Bear Share with Regrouping, Night Noises, Lemonade in Winter, Master Pieces, and Biggest, Strongest, Fastest. I tried to get a variety of books covering a variety of math topics. Since I knew I wouldn't be able to get all the books, I tried to you know, hit different topics. Comparisons, money, graphs, regrouping, so I tried to fill our library with a variety. All right, I hope that it was really helpful to see these two curriculums. If you have any questions about either of these curriculums, feel free to leave me some comments down below. I am always happy to answer. And if you've used these, feel free to share your experience in the comments. I'm always happy to have nerdy curriculum chats with you guys, and I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.